let's go Howdy love in the house, dropping knowledge and facts Uncovering the truth, no need for acting last She ain't afraid to speak her mind, breaking through the lies Rising up with love, taking us to new highs We're living in a world full of secrets and deceit But Heidi's here to expose, bringing truth to the beast She's got a message, spreading it far and wide From addiction to hope, she's on the other side Ooh, yeah. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unfiltered Rise with me, Heidi Love. And today I have with me Debbie or DJ Elliot, and she is a multi-talented author. She has her own podcast called uh, DJ Elliot 14285 at YouTube. And she also writes Hermes Risen magazine. And she knows quite a lot about what I'm going to ask her today. Maybe we'll get a little bit into the golden dawn and see what she thinks about things and how they align. Debbie or DJ, how are you doing? Oh, it's so wonderful to meet you finally, Heidi. I've been watching nice you for a while. So it's great to connect. Thank you for letting me come on. Yes, yes. And do you prefer DJ? I just I want to make mind. sure. Whatever which way. You know, whatever okay. You do, you know. Both are great for me. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I'm calling you the right thing. And you've got just total, complete, like, knowledge on so much basis that I hope people are going to your channel. I hope people will go get these books or get your magazine or however you can subscribe. If you have questions, especially that are leading down the hermetic path, you probably should check this out. <laughs> DJ, will you tell us a little bit about your books and about your channel and what you go into? Oh, thank you. Yeah, my channel is um, a bit of a mixture of from, I, I came from the Gurdjieff work. And so I talk a lot about the fourth way and Gurdjieff is all about the waking up, waking oneself up to live in this lunatic asylum. I also do a lot on Rudolf Steiner, who's anthroposophy. But I come from, because he covers a lot of subjects, I come from the esoteric Christianity side of how we connect to the esoteric Christ, not necessarily the religious institutional Christ. And I have various shows with people that I, I discuss usually Gurdjieff or Christianity. I have guests on now and then. And I also do a lot of recordings of books and lectures. For example, uh, one of the popular ones on my channel, I recorded Alistair Crowley's Moonchild, which you know that brings a lot of people. And Monkey, Journey to the uh, West, which I think is a wonderful, one of the best spiritual soul uh, developing books there is. So mine's, mine's a bit of a mixture, my channel. <laughs> Yes, I love it. I've seen, I've listened to a couple different things where you talked about the monkey mind. And I'd also love to have you back on Theosophy or depending on how much time we have, because I mean, I don't know how much time you have. I'm okay, but I don't want to overpower your time frame. And, and it gets into so many, like they kind of all connect at some level, I think. Like you said, it's a mis mismatch. That's like my channel. But if you go down one path, you ultimately go down a few paths, right? <laughs> Absolutely, because I like on your channel, I do a lot on uh, John D, or I did a few years ago, yes. so I was watching all your John D shows. I actually did um, a few puppet shows of various occult oh. uh, areas, for example, one on Dr. D and his first scryer, Barnabas Saul, and I also did one of the most popular films on my video on my channel is The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, where I reenacted with puppets <laughs> the Golden oh, Dawn's... Yeah. Um, attacked by Alistair Crowley into their vault. And uh, uh, there's a bit of a funny story to that because um, I asked their permission. I sort of put it up to them. Do you mind Golden Dawn members if I make this movie? Because obviously it's telling the world about your story. And it was really weird. Over the next few days, all these things started coming in my way of little bits of information I needed or books that I couldn't find suddenly appeared. And I did it in collaboration with um, an esoteric bookshop in London called Atlantis Bookshop and they helped provide the voices so uh, we were all having a lot of fun doing that and so it's all about when Alistair Crowley stormed the vault in Blythe Road in London he wanted to uh, on the orders of McGregor Mathers who was one of the original leaders of the Golden Dawn they were trying to um, break down and steal all the tools back because Mathers and Crowley had been thrown out and it's a reenactment of that, but done in a fun, humorous way with their blessings. Good. But I've used their words. It's like I've looked up what they've said about it in reports in the past or from their biographies. And I used, for Alistair Crowley, I had um, read part of the Book of the Law, which was the chapter about how, because he was going to knock down, <laughs> knock down in quotation marks, the uh, 
magical temple of the golden dawn i i read the chapter all about where he talks about how his own mystical temple and building would fall down would burn down and then rise again on the spiritual plane so that was part of the reading of the film and then the film went out on the 1st of december and 21 days later Boleskine, Crowley's house in Scotland, burnt down. <laughs> we just don't know whether this was all part of his own magic. Was he using us as puppets to create his own magic, to recite that? You know, at the time, I didn't think anything like that was going right. to happen. This was all just part of the script. But it, it was very peculiar. Um, but it, it's Definitely. a popular film on my channel anyway. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that sounds wild because I know that house is got a fair amount of history in itself not just only with Crowley but like Led Zeppelin and you know all these things that happen afterward and it, and it's curious I mean people want to say okay this isn't anything or whatever but you can't deny the things that keep occurring right his influence is undying pretty much to this day yes yeah and he, he whether you, yeah. manipulates from beyond the grave <laughs> whether we agree with his ways or not or it's not, one exactly. thing that yeah <laughs> That's the thing. He he perverted a lot of things of the Golden Dawn. But at the same time, we have to understand, like, well, what happened with that? And many people don't even know anything except for Crowley's Golden Dawn, right? They they say, oh, well, that's who started it and this and that. That's, that's just simply not true, <laughs> which is why I wanted you on. Yeah, because I don't think, I mean, ultimately, I don't think the people that created it wanted it to go in such a direction, right? Like such a weird, huh. yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not the same and and ultimately also goes back to uh a woman which i found funny uh right supposedly i don't know the letters of Anne. what was it anna sprague franger oh. anna uh, yes. yes yeah and she so, was a German I don't, woman yeah. but we don't actually know if she actually existed nobody actually met her she only sent five letters to the golden dawn and um and she died not long after sending the fifth one so nobody did actually meet her as a person. So there's still all these suspicions as who was Anna Sprengel? Was she a real right. person? Was it somebody under a pseudonym? Because the Golden Dawn originally started out as a Rosicrucian order, not to do with magic, but about mysticism and connecting with Christianity. You know, it began with um, Westcott, whose first name I've forgotten, Samuel Mathers, and another guy called Woodman, the three of them were all part of the Masons and the Theosophical Society and various other, you know, groups and societies of the time. And one of them came across a script, or was given a script by a man who had found it in a second-hand bookshop. He said, this is all a bit weird. It's all written in a cipher. And it was a script that was, uh, Mathers and Westcott were able to decipher. And in that uh, deciphering they discovered an address in Germany so that's how they got the Golden Dawn started they wrote to this address in Germany saying we have found your script that you had you know was lying around in England for some reason mm -hmm. in a second-hand bookshop and we're interested because they could see from the script that it was quite mystical it had a lot of symbolism um, and had a lot of kind of was teasing them about how you could go on this special esoteric path with Rosicrucian uh, connotations and so they wrote off to this address, and that's how this Anna Sprenger got back to them and spoke to them. I've started writing to them, and then she started sending them rites and initiations. But I think later on in the Golden Dawn, after a few years, Matthew started making his own rich rites and rituals for the order through that original document that they found. Mm -hmm. So that's how it all began. But it was all Rosicrucian and Christian based at first of how to. Uh, kind of change themselves so they can become uh, having working towards a uh, an evolvement, I suppose, an evolution of themselves to a higher degree and then be able to take that out into the world and help help change the world for a better place. That was the plan. Yes. Originally. Yeah. Sad yeah. how it went. I mean, ultimately, you know, Crowley became buddy buddy with one of them. I can't remember which you probably know. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that kind of perverted things a bit because then he kind of took it and rolled with it. And, and you know, they kind of uh, persecuted a couple of the other people, got them chucked out, uh, different things, that whole battle of uh, the 
I, where he went down there and demanded to go in the temple. It's a street name. I can't remember. Oh, You'll like probably Rose. know. But... Like Rose yes. Was that. Yeah. yes. So maybe tell people a little bit about that so they know how this uh, ended up in Crowley's lap, at least. Because um, it, it wasn't meant to be what it became, which is sad. Oh. No, it yeah. wasn't. It was not meant to be a magical order. It wasn't meant to be about making magical rituals and summoning demons and things like that. It was about following certain rituals and paths, but in a, you know, no bloodshedding or anything like that, because I, I personally think that's black magic. But it was more about creating your own tools and meditating on certain symbols so that you can connect with your higher self. Crowley himself used to talk about his higher guardian angel all the time. So it started off all on that kind of work. But as um, as in all societies, <laughs> yes, all so soon true. people started wanting to do different things. And that made it kind of difficult for them because <clears throat> excuse me, people were bringing in other versions of uh, paths so it was sort of going off the rosy crucian path and not staying on it uh, you know one of my favorites is florence florence far but she brought in a lot of the egyptian elements and i actually have no problems with the egyptian elements i, I work with foth myself and sekhmet i love ancient egypt so you know there was them kind of things being brought in another guy brought in a lot of buddhism and so there were beginning to be arguments in the higher ranks of this order because there was different levels, different ranks. You had to work your way up of what was the way, right way to run such an order, what were the right rights. Um, and Crowley, though he was, as we know, he was a bit of a beast. And myself, <laughs> if I ever met him, I probably wouldn't like him as a person, but I do know he knew how to work the will. He understood how to uh, develop one's will. And that's one of the important, not just magical paths, but even the Rosicrucian path. It's about developing our will so that we can do this kind of spiritual work. Otherwise, we get easily misled by, you know, what's going on in the world, what we're having for dinner, what situations cause chaos for us and disrupt us and such like. Yeah. So that was really what the problem was, that they started splitting up over their differences about what should be being done. And Mathis went way off to Paris and he wanted certain tools. And because uh, in the uh, Golden Dawn temples, they had in the main room it was an initiation room and it was set out like a vault. And Christian Rosencruz, who was the starter of Rosicrucianism back in the 1400s, when he died, he was laid in a certain coffin which was a seven walled room. And I believe he had certain symbology, probably Christian symbology around him. And they were trying to replicate that because that was part of their initiation. There was, in the early days, there was always scenes of, uh, they'd be showing to uh, new neophytes who were coming along. They would reenact this ritual of, normally Mathers would be in the coffin and they'd be doing all the rituals mm -hmm. and suddenly they'd open the coffin and Mathers would rise from the coffin as if, born anew because that's what most of these uh orders are about they're trying to help you re be reborn and become your new man or your new woman the real you which is also what christ used to talk about you need to be reborn to connect with the divine source so that yeah, row yeah. that happened in blythe road was mathers sending crowley there to uh uh disrupt this temple and uh take it back over it was like he was gonna mm -hmm. get everybody out and just uh change the locks and, and have it for themselves but at, this was the time when wb yates was in charge of it do you know wb yates the poet and he was in the temple at the time and they, they had a little bit of a fisticuffs on the stairs and uh yates was coming down the stairs and crowley was going up the stairs and they had a fight midway and Yates managed to kick him down the stairs. <laughs> Crowley went running out of the front door and called the police. Can you believe it? <laughs> That's so funny. I think the police's response was more funny than what happened because they just said, get a lawyer. <laughs> and what would be even funnier was Crowley was dressed in <sighs> full magical regalia at the time with his kilt on and a big cloak. <laughs> and I heard that he had... Um, I heard that he, originally he had a Horus helmet on, but I was okay. reading the other day that it was a 
um, a tartan kind of strange hat that would have, you know, just <laughs> anybody out really of coming down the road, especially in those days. Uh, yeah. so he, and he had a big sword on him. So, you know. <laughs> the police were like, <laughs> okay, Peter Pan, get out of here. Yeah. I'm sure that they were just like, this guy is not well. Like, just let him leave, you know. Which, I mean, there's like always, yeah, fine line between brilliance and uh, mania, magic. you know. Mm. It's kind of well, hard to. He had a magical spell to make himself invisible. Oh, and he used to walk down the road thinking no one could see him. But I personally think people just saw him and thought, right, I won't look at him because he's <laughs> nuts. <laughs> yeah, no, not going to engage this one. This looks like a dangerous situation. Like, and and I mean, I get it because if I saw that, I would definitely pretend he was invisible as well. Because <laughs> what do you do? You're going to open a can of worms, you know, if you say, well, what are you doing? Probably yeah. not the best idea. Yeah. No, no, no eye contact with people like that, really. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Yeah. And you really don't know what you're going to get if you do, because I work in mental health and we've had some of those people brought in um, that are in full mania or in complete disassociation or whatever. And they re they can be dangerous only because they're not in the same reality as us. Right. Mm -hmm. So not not to uh, make them feel bad because there's always, you know, work that could be done to merge the two or whatever. Now they're really trying hard not to just medicate people out of it, I think, at least where I work. Um, they try to do a lot of different things. So that's nice to see, you know, uh, that people don't respond to it as well, but um, we do like EMDR therapy and we do ketamine and we do all these different things. Um, and I've seen a lot of good things come out of that. And I think it's good, but a lot of people are too afraid to finish because it is a work through this trauma, which is like shadow work almost like it's very similar. And, and I think that the people just are under enough stress that maybe that's a lot at that time frame. Hopefully if you're in the midst of something like this, you can finish it because I've seen really wonderful results at the end. So that's my thoughts on that one. <laughs> I totally agree with you on that because we do need to change the way that people are being dealt with that have this kind of trauma. And sometimes it is from a, either doing some kind of right wrongly but sometimes also it's just because of how life has treated them isn't it I'm sure you've got many different cases but yeah. I'm a big believer yeah. of because I, I feel the dark side can get into people and I think a lot of this is through uh alcohol drugs and yes. that kind of thing I've noticed from my own when I was younger how I could change if I you know even just smoked a joint or something I gave up alcohol when I was 24 I saw how much trouble it got in me into it, mm -hmm. how it changed me. And, yep. um, they have that old uh, guy, Al Cool, you know, that th this is like real things. Like there's a whole reason why they called it spirits. Why? I mean, it, it's a very thin line. Like you have to be still, if you want to drink, that's fine. Have a drink. But there's a reason why I think in the Bible, it warns us about being a drunkard, right? It's not necessarily a drink. It's being without your uh, inhibitions totally or being out of your control of, of yourself, right? You have a realm, we all do, that we try not to have anything breach, right? We're walking in circles, not lines. So if you let a little weak spot, right? Like it's just a little weak spot. So, uh, well, we're hoping people are learning to walk. Anyways, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, like you were saying about the shadow work, that's a lot of what goes on in magical orders anyway. And also just uh, not just magical orders, esoteric path work is you have to face your shadow. I myself used to do one-to-ones with people on helping them develop their soul. And I realized that was the toughest bit for them to get through. Mm -hmm. And those that did was fantastic. They went on to bigger and better things. But many people, that's when they fell off the path because they don't want to look at their inner demons and the things we've done in the past, like which we've all done. I used to, I try and explain that to people. Everyone's got things that makes them cringe where they've gone to the dark side kind of yes, thing. Yes, absolutely. Yep. We, we regret, but it's how we deal with it now. We can't sit there letting it tear us down. No. But if we can try and look at it impartially and just say, right, that was me in the past. I'm a better person now. I'm changing. And I would yes. not make that kind of mistake again. But it's easy to fall back into patterns, isn't it? And that's what a lot well, of these programs. It's a, 
that's the demons that keep you there. These lowercase di diam diamond ions or whatever, right? We want to call them or daemons, however they want to say. But these things were are the opening regret and 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 fear and like death and living in like this weird realm. I've lost a lot of people and I get it. I get seeing people stuck in it. My mom has a hard time coming out of it. Fear is a big one. Fear mm. and pride are probably the two biggest openings for like uh, a problem, right? To enter in. But we, we do what you said. We pick up our house. We move. We move. We take the things we had with us in the house, right? Our couch and things. We move to a new address and we have to remember we don't live there anymore. Now you still might have something like a book or a lamp or something that reminds you of something, but you still don't live there anymore. That's the biggest thing I think people need to learn to let really let go. When people say let go and let God, I don't think they always understand how hard that can be. Right. Like, it's not easy um, and grow, grow from it. And then teach somebody else how to grow from it. And that's the whole point of my channel. Like, yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to be so. examples, aren't we? I know we're not, neither, none of us are perfect. None of us are Christ or Buddhas or anything like that. But if we can help people to say we're all struggling, but we're still also trying to do the right thing and we're learning from our mistakes, you can too. And you can learn from other people. We've had all these teachers in the past. You know, we're going into the age of Aquarius where we see every individual for themselves. But we've got we've had yes. the age of Pisces with the teachers that have told us how to do this. Yeah. But yep. It takes a lot of work. And some people find people want it on a plate. And sadly, developing your soul is not something that can just be well, it can be given to you, but you still have to work on it and put the effort in yeah. and look at yourself. You have to do it. Yep. Yeah. You have to do the work. And yeah. that's with anything, whether it be magic or your soul work or your whatever you're doing. And that's what I always tell people. Like I'm a Christian, but my Christianity doesn't affect what I'm going to teach others because that, and I don't belong to a church. And maybe that's the difference is I don't buy into the whole, like I did that already, you know, and that's not for me. Yeah. That's not it. Um, but everybody has to get there. And that's a scary thing. Like you said, I think that's where religion does come in because they say here it is on a plate or even uh, bad things like, you know, like here it is on a plate. Oftentimes anybody with all the answers is full of it. I'm sorry. They just are. Yeah. I know what you mean, but they know too much. Yeah. But you was mentioning fear and pride earlier. That also comes along with them people that try to put people in fear. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But then they're being a bit prideful of who they are. And I find it quite interesting where the word pride's gone in the last few years. It's like it's been inverted. And some people might take this wrongly, but pride was one of the deadliest sins. And I, I think it's good that we all be the people we want to be and have a little bit of, hey, look at me. I'm, you know, I'm, I do this and I do that. But it's kind of gone overboard now of, you know, the, the way the pride whole uh, mission has has just taken over the world of to me it's kind of like a bit of an inversion going on yes there should be a difference yeah. between being proud of who i am or what sex i am or what religion i am to being i'm just being me and you are you and we should all be grateful for each other being whatever they are we should be accepting yeah. each other uh, i see how the pride uh groups all started out to try and make things more acceptable which is brilliant to do uh, you know, we are having to teach everyone, you know, doesn't matter what race or gender or religion you're into, we should still be treating each other as human beings. Absolutely. That that should be the first. Well, pride was the first sin. You know, why did <laughs> Satan fall? Because he wanted to be God and he was proud of who he was. But then we get back to Crowley and this is the aeon of, you know, everyone is the star, right? He saw this coming, whether or not he was that shit crazy or not mm. he knew some things and and then there's always like did he act that way because he was a spy or was this really who he was or was this just a game or whatever who knows like i said fine line between madness and an absolute brilliance you have to be a little mad to stick your hand in somebody's chest cavity to work on their heart or fly a plane without being able to see where you're going i mean these are the things that we all have to accept and understand. But at the same time, it doesn't change who you 
are mm -hmm. as a person and you shouldn't treat the garbage man any less either. Right. Like exactly, we could get yeah. there. We could get there. That would be <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> but I do think Crowley saw this coming and, mm -hmm. and he talks about this, you know, about uh, even transsexualism, everything he's, he's already got this nailed down. So I'm trying to always figure out, you know, I've done, um, this is my third in a series on him. One was all about this author that completely believes he, it was an act kind of that he was just the spy and, and doing this kind of 007 act, you know, over here, others that he's the beast, right? I'm somewhere in the middle. Like, I, I don't know, because I don't know the answer. So <laughs> I'm kind of like you, I don't know the answer either, but I do see that he understood how the cosmos worked and how to develop yourself so that you can fit in with it. And he saw how the world was so chaotic that he just took advantage of it. Yep. You know, and I, so I, many people do, don't yeah. they? That's every politician ever uh, create. Well, I won't say e every we will say the majority because I don't want to be rude, but yeah. And we have to remember in those days, he had asthma really badly and the um, medicine for asthma in those days was, was um, heroin. Yes. Heroin. Heroin. That's like, that's mm -hmm. like a heroin. So that's why he became a heroin addict. You know, the doctors put him on that. It wasn't because he'd gone on some drug binge. No. And many people nope. don't understand that. And that's going to affect him over the years. You know, he was still taking it when he was an old man living in, Hastings on the south coast of, of England. Well, and with that being dependent, I'm an asthmatic and severe allergy person. Like I had an anaphylactic shock last week. So I understand having to feel like you need something to live so desperately. Like there's nothing more scary than trying to get in breath when you can't breathe. Like that's mm -hmm. a, a whole weird thing. So I understand why he would do it, even if possibly he knew the consequence of right, like letting in a little puncture in his circle because it's going to because what does it affect it affects our mind you know yeah. so but it is what it is what was he supposed to do back then you know i don't know talking to all these uh dem demons that he was calling up probably had an effect on him as well uh, definitely definitely his dark side wasn't he and yeah, I, understand I think so I myself don't think we need to do that kind of thing to discover our dark side we just need to look at ourselves but uh <laughs> Figure out what it links to. People are so easy um, to accept that, that there are guardian angels, right? We have these wonderful things or are things protecting us. But also you have to remember one thing that is true is as above, so below. There is a hierarchy of, of God and angels and demons. And there's like, if you want to get really into it, there's ranking, there's systems, there's, it's a whole lead out thing. I've looked at it and gone, this is too intricate to fake. Right. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. think this is fake. Yeah. Um, and the keys of Solomon and all these things. But I mean, I get that some people don't want to study that either. So this is why I do what I do. I remember the first time I felt very uh, forwarded to study John D or the occult. And I thought, you I'm a Christian. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me up there. Like, what do you want from this is crazy stuff. Like, I don't want to do this. This is scaring me, you know, and I was scared. So it didn't work good. Because what is fear? It's back to the fear thing. So as soon as I let go of the fear and knew that God would have me and, and there was a reason, it, it became obvious to me what the reason was. Because this isn't for everyone. This is kind of scary for some people where it would fracture their, you know, ego too much. Yeah. Right. We don't want to do that um, to go to junk. You know, he understood the things as well. He just made it scientific. You know, it's all over. Like I see it in, in past now. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is where he got this and this and this. And and it's all back to the same thing. And this goes back further than John D. This goes back to Al Kindy, who knows where it came from before that. Like we just, I mean, we just see it, right? They just developed it as best they could, much like the Golden Dawn. You know, look at what it turned into. Yeah. From I mean, my own studies of looking back to all this, I see there's been what, what they say in philosophy they call it the ancient wisdom some other places call it the ancient truth there's been a this has been going on since i think mankind first came to this planet or arrived on that whatever your belief is there was a first time and uh it, it's like a as if we were split as in 
well this is why i think the divine source or god he's he's given us free will to do what we want because if he got in, if he interfered then we, it's like a hierarchy uh, like you were saying a hierarchy but it's a dictatorship at the top but he's given us free will to do what we want so that's why many people fell away from god because they lost that connection because they had the free will to go out and i don't know i don't know what they were doing in in first man times <laughs> but, uh, but I also, go grab their woman and drag her oh, back to the cave <laughs> but i also also um like the idea of in ancient egypt in the old times in the septepi gods walked with the humans so there's still a divine source that wasn't involved with humanity but there was uh the lower gods were on the earth helping humanity to develop and when you read the bible it's about the watchers isn't it they were on yeah in, in eden helping humanity it's real it's all yeah. linked like if you believe in the in the nephilim or the watchers mm -hmm. right and you get back to the books they took out conveniently enough it all is the same story it's all the same story and i i have no problem with uh the story of anki i have no problem with the anunnaki because if you switch the names it's very similar right we're right mm -hmm. back to the same thing and that's what I try to tell people because it's the institution of religion where it's about money and power because that's all it's about. Um, it's not about God. If it was about God, money and power wouldn't matter because we would all be the same, right? My thing is always, where did money come from? This is why I think money was created by the dark forces. When God threw Adam and Eve out of Eden, he never gave them a bit of money to help them on their way. You know, money came along. We, we don't actually know what the origin of money is, to be honest, do we? But mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure that was, a you know, a little bit of a satanic or demonic uh, uh, gift to us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because it divided the people, and that's what the dark forces want to do. Divide the people amongst themselves and divide them, keep them away from the divine source. Yeah. And to make us have ego, right? Because death of ego is going to help humanity help each other. That's kind of what happened to me when I came out of Mormonism, but even more so when I had a lot of struggle in my life. And people always say, well, if you have a loving God, then all that stuff wouldn't have happened to you. No, no, no. That loving God lets things happen. He doesn't do it. He's mm -hmm. not the one. He's not the one behind the scenes. They think we're like little play toys or something like dolls. And he's like up there yeah. doing this. No, and that's not it. That was not his plan. That was Lucifer's plan. And, and you know, we can call him by a lot of names, right? Like, I mean, Shemiaza, we can go there. Like whatever the dark force was, wanted control. Anytime it feels controlling or like you have to do something and you have to do this or that. That's not what God rallied for. That was the whole point. That was the whole point with us, yeah. you know, so. Um, I and I don't read the book of Job when they throw all that kind of thing at oh, me. Love the I book of Job. I don't like that in the book of Mormon. I don't think you have. Yeah. You still look at the old. Yeah. Testament, they are very, um, they're more, they do believe in the Bible, but they're more about you give 70% and you do the best you can. And maybe Jesus will pitch in the 30 if you're good enough and you pay your tithing. But that's not true. You know, all these things are about money. And once you get back to money, that's where the problem is. If it has to do with money or power, you're probably going the wrong direction. That's what I always tell people, you know. God is not that way. And once you've been low enough and kicked enough and down dog dirt enough, like that, you know what God is, then you know what God isn't. Right. Yeah. And so all those struggles are for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And that's why many people describe God in a negative terms because we can't really describe him in the positive, but that's because he's, he's unknowable or she, yeah. I know many people don't like using the word he, she, or it. But it's just easy. That's how we speak, isn't it? We have to give them a mm -hmm. definition. But God is unknowable. And I, I don't think, I think we should all pray. But I think those prayers go to the angel. You know, that hierarchy was talking about. They go through mm -hmm. the angels, the archangels, up to the lower gods that there were in the olden times. And then up to Christ, which is why normally Christ says, you know, your way to God is through me, to the Father is through yes. me. Yeah. 
Yep. Well, and this is, if this is confusing to anyone, read uh, Michael Heiser's work. There's a council of gods. Like I really like the way he describes it. And it helps under the, the understanding. Now you can read a lot of works after that, but that's a good basis for knowledge to understand what is happening. And you have to remember the good angels are often imitated by the bad angels, which is what happened with John, poor John D. He was a Christian and he really loved God. And he really thought he was doing something wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's sad to me because anytime you get that far in and then all of a sudden there's a price there's never a price that's against the words of God, right? Like, or the feeling or the, you wouldn't sleep with somebody else's wife. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, you know? And at that point, John D should have backed up and said, no way, but he didn't because he was eight years in and it was this whole entire everything to him because he really thought it was going to be something. And it was, it became a lot of things, but I don't think they were what he intended, you know, sadly. Mm -hmm. But even with those little things that did make him in the beginning begin to doubt, he didn't let that doubt carry through because he wanted so much to believe in what they were doing. Yes. I think their big mistake was, from where I've worked with various exorcists over the years, when you get to that kind of point of c contact with another being in another realm, you know, you're supposed to ask their name and then you're supposed to ask who they serve and and they're meant to tell you whether it's for god or the other side whether they're in the works mm. working for christ or the divine source yahweh well maybe not yahweh i, I still right I'm yeshua yeah yahweh. maybe <laughs> yeah yeah yep um, d never asked them what their whose service they were in from what i can see from the transcripts that i've looked right. at he just right. believed I in the angels that. Yeah, I think he wanted it so badly. I don't know that he cared, right? Like, and it's so hard to get to the ones that you want to get to. Same thing with Joseph Smith. People say he was high on mushrooms and all this nonsense. And I'm like, no, this is a very similar story. This is the story. And even if he did do that, right, That's that can be a part of contact. He was in contact with something the same as Crowley. Crowley contacted AWAS. He didn't appear as an angel of light to him because why he didn't have to right he, crowley had his mind open to dark enough things that he didn't have to disguise himself right like whatever it was it was but i think it's funny that every one of these channeled religions end up with a price to be paid and it is never pretty like mohammed's was pedophilia and uh, polygamy whereas joseph smith was polygamy and polyamory people forget he was sleeping with people's wives also oh i didn't know that yes Yep. No, he wasn't. He was spiritually marrying men's wives that were already married. And so you cannot do that. That's not even part of uh, this religion now. Like if you go to the most staunch people like the fundamentalists, they still don't believe in that, you know, but they do have some things that that they still say that are very indicative in the fundamentalist groups like Breuer and Sawyer. Like they say these things for brother and sister still. And I know that that came from somewhere, see? And so when I get into things like when I went to the temple and I got initiated and I got new clothing and I got a new name and I learned all these secrets and, you know, it it's too similar this is not made up. It's too intricate and it's too similar. It's just too similar. So I don't know, but he did, you know, have quite a few things that were similar with the Magus. So I'm pretty certain he got a copy of that, but even still, I really believe the contact was there. People have a hard time with that. And I understand that, but. I'll yeah. I, I think the contact's there as well. I don't think these are figments of people's imaginations. Well, going back to what you were saying about all the uh, sleeping around and the sex activity and such, like a lot of the dark forces live off that energy. They like that energy. So that's why they try to encourage people. That So that, again, makes me suspicious when you suddenly hear, oh, they've been, you know, sleeping with all the students or the initiates or, you know, mm -hmm. as you say, wives. Because sex energy is a, a fine energy. It's a very powerful energy. It's creative energy. And... This is one of the problems with the world today. People don't understand how to use their sex energy. They waste it most of the time. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to just be so you go and have sex with someone to create a child. We use that sex energy to create works of art or books or, you know, it's, that's what 
we should be drawing from is the sexual energy to do any kind of project or creativity. Um, Why did they make the nuns and the priests asexual? It's perfect. Uh, it yes, takes exactly. it from them. It takes their power and gives it away because then they're sexually frustrated all the time. Yeah. And then they can feed off that as well. And why do they uh, expose our sexual energy constantly? Right. Why is there, uh, you know, the, the start of naked pictures or the start of, you know, the internet with uh, porn. Porn is like the number one. I'll tell people yeah. right now, yeah. whether you're religious or not, get off the porn. It's so caustic to your soul. Like if people don't understand this mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying don't have sex, like sex is that it's not yeah, a demonized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have it be beautiful, but remember this, you create a soul tie with every person you are with. And if you do not know what you're doing with your energy, then other energies will use it, right? Like if they're just That's using right. you as a goyim, you're just a goyim, you know. <laughs> Which is again, it's hard. developing your will and understanding once you start developing your will, you start realizing how you're using your intellect, how you're using your emotions, how you're using your body. And over time, you start to be able to realize, right, that's wasted energy. And instead, using the energy to help your inner self to develop to connect with your higher self but the sex energy is one that well for example with um leonardo da vinci they say oh he was gay he had all these relationships with his young uh, protégés model maybe he did but from what i've read of what he was doing i think he was probably celibate most of the time because he knew if he used that energy to develop uh, great artistic works and all these mm -hmm. other ideas he had you know, that's why he was so creative and had endless thoughts and uh, such like that. Yeah, they still do it today. Yeah, they, yeah. they don't have sex while they're training and they mm -hmm. don't drink. And there's a reason you should like look at the, the reasoning, what we're saying. This is used today. Like don't drink alcohol, don't do drugs, blah, blah, blah. They do all these same things we're talking about, but yet sounds crazy and kooky when we're talking about it, right? We're we're just off off the charts on the other side. Oh, sure, you know, we're obviously, you know, some stuck up, you know, nun kind of women that don't understand, not, you know, don't understand how everybody's having great sex. But when you mm -hmm. get talking to people, a lot of people know that what they're being told to look at, you know, on TV and on adverts and music videos and such like, we don't need to be that sexualized. No, you know, it's no. nice. It was to never meant for that. Nice yeah, to go out and be good and look well. You know, yeah. but, um, there's a difference between it becoming turning into, a, you know, like a pornography or a way of life. You know, children are being sexualized far too young. Yeah, that that one just is horrible. Yeah. Like that, that to me is where we really have become. It's almost. It's what will make this world dissolve at some point is the corruption of the children because children are not meant to be tainted like this they are meant to explore things um in a normal way like be a child but they i mean oftentimes they think kissing is sex till they're older you know unless they've got someone messing with them in their brain or otherwise showing them things i just don't think it's meant to be that innocence is so special that that's why they used to make people virgins on sacrifices like they know this stuff right mm -hmm. And so it's sad to me that this is where we go, where we're headed, I guess, as a population. Because most of the Golden Dawn people were all celibates. Like um, uh, Maffer's married Moina, Mina Bergson. She was the sister of Henri Bergson, the French philosopher. But they were celibate from the beginning of their marriage. They never consummated their marriage because they knew they wanted to use that sexual energy in their own magical works. Mm -hmm. But they weren't doing magical works to, you know, get them a great house or a new car or anything like that. They were doing it so they could develop to reach their higher self. Where well, I've noticed over the last, well, probably before I was even born, definitely the last 50 years, that's been getting to change and magical groups is all about getting something that you need and you got to live this life to the best you can and you deserve everything you want, you know. And it's, very uh, new age. Yeah, yeah, very new age. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's kind of a perversion of the last thing, right? It's like yeah. a perversion of the last thing of, of being helpful to others used to be, you know, like I said, you, you become, you work through your own because you cannot teach anyone if you haven't 
taught yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you help others and teach others. And then you get to this different level where now it's not about that, right? It's about fame, money, levels, level up, you know, yeah. degrees, if we want to go that way, whatever it is. It's just not how the design was because like you said, money was not a part of the design. So what the heck are people doing? If we would all really do what we're supposed to do, like love your neighbor. And I'm not saying I love my neighbor. Like I don't go over there every day and try and, you know, but your fellow man is your neighbor and you can even smile, even smiling. Like they took that away from us in 2020. I think that was powerful. You know, and then I, it was so similar to the OTO and Fauci's now saying, oh, uh, I made that up. No, you didn't. That's part of the OTO to stand six feet apart and wear a mask. You're lying. Yeah. You just want to take the heat off of that because they don't want that out there. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But th uh, these I things you can OTO. help people. Yeah. I, 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 kinda, I used to hang out with a lot of ph phlegmic people and I don't mind all the uh, the magical side of, you know, trying to do things for the world. But the OTO I didn't realize was the political side of Philema. So I got out of there pretty quickly. I didn't like that kind of thing. And not just them, but other magical orders I work with were also a lot trying to help people with hexing people, other people, or yeah. hurting other people. And again, like what you were saying, that's not no, helping no. each other, is it? You know, to me, no. the most important thing is the golden rule be kind to each other. Yes. Gurdjieff says, Every person you look at, you've got to rem understand that one day that person will die. That person is a human being that's trying to live a life as well. You know, and there was, you know, lots of different sayings of, you know, every, every person you look at, they've got their own problems as well. Nobody is perfect. So we should be helping each other, not cursing people. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. But I understand why people want to curse people because everybody's, you know, just annoying each other, really. Because they've yeah, got sure. that spiritual vibration going through them of we're all human beings. Everyone's out for themselves. And this is something Rudolf Steiner warns us about. In a few thousand years, he predicts there will be a war of all against all. And everybody will hate everybody. Fathers will be attacking sons and mothers will be, you know, attacking sisters. Everybody's going to, because everyone's going to think through their ego development and not a spiritual path development, that they're the one that's right. So they can't see, they can't seem to all live together peacefully. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and <laughs> I've seen it within my own family. I've, I, I know you don't know me, so I don't know if you've heard my story, but I've lost my oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. She has estranged from our family at, by choice. And it's a complete cutoff, mostly to do with me. And all it's done is harm everything. You know, all, all it's, she still wants to talk to her other brothers and sisters and things. That's why I say me, because it's focused to me. Or it's a but, two way thing still, but yeah. It's yeah, focused, yeah. yeah. But I would, I would be willing, here's the difference. And I think where Steiner's going with it is they're teaching us, well, that's a bad person, not a toxic behavior. That's a bad choice. Yeah. Not a, a, It's not who they are. And so these things have become very acceptable to say, well, they're a garbage person, throw them away. That is so dangerous because you never know what tomorrow can bring. You never know what a conversation may change. If you don't have that conversation because you literally are just going to, you know, rumple it up and throw it in the trash can, you're never going to get anywhere, right? You're not going to work through anything. And that's what they want. Absolutely. Absolutely. They want you to label people. But without looking at yourself and going, well, actually, sometimes I'm a bit toxic and mm -hmm. kind we of ignore it. We do bad things ourselves. Yeah. And most of the yeah. time, we, we don't like what other people are doing because really it's a reflection of ourselves. It's true. And, and here is the work. Sorry. Yeah, here's the work. You, no, no, you're good. Here's the work we all have to do, right? You were saying the same thing. And we have to start identifying and taking responsibility, even though it's uncomfortable for whatever you did do. But once it's done and you've worked through it and changed that behavior, you have to remember you don't let people make you go back to there because that's what's changing, too, is the forgiveness isn't like a, I'm the, I'm a really hothead person, but also I'm the first person to forgive. I, I could care less and I'll forget about it in a minute if somebody comes to me. I, I don't I want to hug it out and just say it didn't not that it didn't happen, but that it doesn't matter right? Like it doesn't matter to me, even if it's horrible, 
Like there's been horrible things in my past that have happened in my family growing up, which I have every right to cut certain people off in my life. And all I would do is damage myself because it's stupid. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah. Absolutely. Because forgiveness is one of the most purest energies, which again, yeah. this is why they don't want us all forgiving each other because forgiveness sets off another energy between two people that reconnects you. If people yes. are doing forgiveness properly, it also reconnects because, you know, the divine likes to see people forgiving each other. So that's why they don't want us doing that. But I know people do hold grudges and some people pretend they forgive them, but in the background, they're like, I'm so annoyed about that. Yeah, so I'm going to cut them off later through. some other way because I didn't yeah. like it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a peculiar one. And it took me many years to realize how forgiveness properly works. I'm still working on it. I still have to deal with it every day yeah. with certain people. But I notice how by learning to see why I don't want to be caught up in their, you know, these toxic situations with them, I have to navigate yeah. my way through them and see why they're behaving like that, why I react to them, why they press yeah. my buttons. And this is all part, again, of the what we were talking about earlier, of the shadow work. We have to look at why people push our buttons and make us want to, you know, lose our rag or, you know, get envious or whatever, or be depressed because someone's treating us in a bad way. It's like the walking in other people's shoes. You see why they're being like it. You're seeing why you're reacting to it. And over time, you'll be able to turn that round. And when it starts happening again, you'll be like, no, I'm not letting that happen this time. Yeah. That's Even one if of the most the conversation. Yeah, just yeah. walk. Just say, you know what, you don't have to be a jerk either. You can say, you know what, I'm really tired. I'm going to call you back tomorrow. Yeah. Why is that so hard? You know, even if you lose your temper, because I do, I still do. I'm a hothead. I will be the first person to admit what I am. You know, I, and I'll take it because I don't care because I will take that. But I will never hold a, I won't care about whatever it is you did if, if, you tell me, oh, I'm sorry, I just, or whatever, not even a sorry. I don't even care. Like just start it over somehow. You know, people are prideful sometimes about us. Sorry. No, if somebody just comes up to me the next day, oh, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. You know, like, and, and it really is to let go, but some people pretend and that's even more dangerous because then you get passive aggressiveness and that's just a lot. Exactly. That's really hard. Yeah. And it also makes people like that quite ill because you're holding it in your body and then that's going to create a sickness in you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and well, mm -hmm. serial killers, and I'm sorry, people, this is the truth, is the people that you will find that have had the most trouble are like, they'll say, you know, Ted Bundy or, or Dahmer, they'll say he was the nicest, most quiet neighbor. Like, I mean, they don't, they mm -hmm. don't outburst. They don't do that. This is not the the danger that society makes it out to be right. The The explosion is actually sort of a natural thing now to go completely wild is not. I'm just saying to be angry. God was angry. There's a lot in the Bible about anger. Okay. The angry is part of you, who you are. Controlling your anger is also part of what you should do. And we all have to get there. And also owning whatever you do in anger is a bigger problem because a lot of people don't want to do that. But, you know, we all have, have our things. Like whatever my thing is, is it your thing? Isn't somebody else? I mean, you know, we all have our thing that gets in there, you know, and it's, it's hard because you don't know the background of it, right? Like people with PTSD or people raised in abuse or people, that was one of the only two feelings I was able to have was happiness and anger. You know, oh. this crying thing wasn't a good thing when I was little, you, you were crying. I'll give you something to cry about. And yeah, that was true, you that. know? Yeah. Yeah. And it was really abusive. And I, I know that now, but as a kid, you don't know that you don't know you're identifying with your abuser and starting a PTSD development. That's going to pass down through, you know, with your kids and whatever you, you would never choose that. You would never go, I'm going to wreck you like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. there are people out there sadly that are like that. But I think if you start yes. realizing you do know a psychopath and they're disrupting your life, then ones have to go. <laughs> yes, not gonna yes. And then that's a scary. Yeah. Psychopathic with. Um, yeah, that's a dangerous one. Then. Yeah, I do recommend people look up as to what, who, 
what kind of people psychopaths are because it's like what you were saying with the serial killers yeah. they come across as nice you know sadly this is why children get abused because at first yeah you know that what we know as uncle pedo originally was being a nice person because mm -hmm. otherwise they wouldn't have trusted him to go into that room and then he you know and that he they can convince them to keep quiet don't tell mummy this is our secret you know then they put in the fear into them so they're breaking their i believe breaking their psyche from a young age yes which, yes like your son is bringing trauma into their adult life and they don't really understand how to interact with humans because they don't know who to trust you know and right that's another big thing that's missing in this world that's a scary situation when you mm. are um, a child like that, because I was, and <clears throat> you have to understand, like you said, blood, certain bloodlines, there, there are some really dark things in this world that people don't want to accept. And I understand that. I wish that that didn't exist too, um, but it does. And they use this for power because they understand the psyche clear back before Carl Jung. Like this is older than this but again we get back into magical thinking practices and which way they're using them right it's all depending on on the the application with what they're doing i mean you know it it's one thing to want to help humanity quite another to use something for your gain whether it be political money whatever that is you know um and they do it to their own families and sadly mm -hmm. that's a weird that's weird i can't understand that if you have done this as a parent because you were abused, that's a different, I'm not talking about that. You know, that's a thing you have to work through. But I'm talking about the people that do know what they're doing. This isn't an accident. Exactly. You know, most people are aware of what they're doing. Most people know when they're doing something bad because they're not awake to their conscience. It's actually, it's one of the ones that I do tell a lot of people about of when I do a kind of a meditation to send something else to the world. I normally try to send out a open up to your conscience vibration because really they're not listening to it, are they? You know, and I yeah. think conscience is your soul. And many people ignore what's being their conscience is saying to them most of the time. Mm. You know, most of these, um, you remember when uh, I've forgotten what their names were, the ISIS uh, group in in uh afghanistan and that and they all wore their masks oh, didn't they? With oh yeah yeah uh the the kamikaze ones yeah no. the, uh, excuse me yeah they knew by work because they were wearing masks al-qaeda uh -huh. Al That's it. they knew what they was doing is wrong so they covered their faces mm -hmm. you know even though they were trying to glorify what they were doing and egging each other on but to if you if you knew what you was doing was right you wouldn't cover your face no, no. And and they keep it going by incest. And this is something they don't talk about often, but this is the truth, people, is that, you know, when you keep your bloodline, quote unquote, pure, they know that there's problems with this. But they also know that if you have a lower mental stability, either with uh, mentally passing down certain things or interruption with the IQ development because the blood is too related or whatever. It's easier to control people. They don't want philosophers or thinkers anymore. Where the hell did that all go? Like, why, why did that stop? Right. This is not uh, that that's why there's podcasters. There's some people left that do this, but like, they don't want you reading books. And then I think it's hilarious that people say, well, I'm just going to watch TV because I need to chill out and whatever and i'm like i understand that i do understand it to a point to a point it should be like alcohol right like you don't do it every night and get drunk every night because if you do that you're just going to program it's called program television program. for a reason yes yes yeah well, and, I, and I agree with you on that and i do say people say oh, i just need to chill out so they watch them but i remind them tell yourself i am watching a program before you watch yes it. you get drawn in you know, I personally think the dark forces come through the TV and the uh, computer. I, I don't so I'm doubt like, it. You know, you've got to tell yourself, if you've got to program yourself before you watch yes. the program. This is just the program because they, uh, you get drawn into a movie, you get drawn into a TV series. I've done it myself and binge watch TV series. And then for what have I just done with, you know, 48 hours of my life? <laughs> and you come out all square eyed. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> if we can tell. Well, and it gets harder. 
Yeah. It gets harder the more you know they don't want you reading books because we just barely went to a movie, uh, the new Mad Max movie last night. It was my husband's birthday. And we don't go to movies that much anymore. And uh, honestly, I, I don't listen to music that much. A lot of things have changed for me. Um, not that I don't like certain things, but everything is symbolism. I sat there in the first 10 minutes of that movie and went, okay, <laughs> this is what's happening. And I told my husband, I'm nudging my husband. This is about the Amazons with one boob and their procreation and da, da, da. And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? And I'm like, I'm being serious. You know, the ones that can procreate without a man. And he's like, what on earth have you been listening to? And I'm like, I'm just telling you what they're saying. I don't say I believe all of it. Yeah. But obviously this is what this is. Right. And he doesn't know what half the time he thinks I'm a little crazy and that's fine. But I, he's like, why would you listen to something like that? I'm like, well, it doesn't matter what I believe. It matters what they believe, because that's what I'm trying to figure out. Right. To help people. Because if we don't understand where this went, just like the Golden Dawn, people will say, oh, that's, that's the Crowley thing. That's a really evil thing. I'm like, um, well, it became certain things that became very evil. You're, yeah. you're not 100% wrong on that. You know, just like, okay, the Nazi symbolism. That symbol is not a, a bad symbol, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it became a bad symbol, right? It became propagandized because they knew how to use it. Why was he so interested in using it again with the Mad Max show? Total Hitler stuff going on. I'm watching it like, oh. what is happening here? And then they're making like these chimera baby weirdos. And I'm like, this is like watchers weird shit. Like, I, I'm just like, this I'm watch crazy. This crazy now. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. It's, it, you will. When you watch it, you'll be like, <laughs> you'll just sit there with your mouth, open, you know? And, and then she has this seed this peach seed and her mom says you know take this seed because they were in a, in a land of abundance these amazon women with no men and just these kids and women and i'm like i know this story i just listened about this and so and then she gives her the seed and says replant this seed someday and she's not talking about this dumb peach seed right like she, she's talking about um humanity you know mm -hmm. And, and trying to get rid of this weird way that they think now and they've got all these problems with chimeras and they were looking at her like she's perfectly developed. They made a big deal to say this. And then the names of the sons were like Rectus. This is weird. Yeah, Rectus. And I, the other one was like something with test, testes. And I'm like, this is like creepy. And I'm like hitting my husband. He's like, stop, I'm trying to watch the show. <laughs> Yeah, you know, anymore. I can't do this show. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like I know I'm ruining it. But it's like you see through it now, right? Like, mm -hmm. but but what about the person that doesn't? Like you go back to the programming thing, you know. What about the people that aren't with the shield up just soaking that through? What is happening there? So it's all pre-programming, isn't it? Yeah. It's all pre-programming for what's coming. So and it's done in the dark that even so and then you know you come out of the dark i don't know i'm just really weird now like but. You're in the dark so your attention's focused isn't it uh -huh. yep and i just think it's uh, even with the way they brought the recliners in now and you're laying down like and then you get up right like it's all symbolic i think it's weird but i, I just think that it's really something different than they say it is and not that i never go Okay, I just see through it. Yeah, same here. I can see yeah. through most things. I see symbolism in various shows. I notice now that in many shows over the last, oh, I'm trying to think when Buffy ended, but it was after Buffy ended. I used to like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. and, um, after that, I started watching in other shows. I kept noticing that they were doing certain characters would do the two horns same thing. Yes. So I was yes. doing I'm doing the peace sign back at them. Because yes. I felt like we were trying to, again, put that symbolism into people. Mm -hmm. And I notice it in, I, I don't have a TV myself, but if I was staying at my friend's house and they're watching you know, their favorite program, you know, I remember it being on one, some lawyer program someone was doing and the guy's, you know, giving his verdict on the stamp. He was doing that symbol. And I'm like, mm, programming. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the evil eye has come back. Have you noticed this? The, the evil eye is, they're bringing back the bohemian movement. See, I have a lot of teenagers. They're bringing back the hippie bohemian movement, but they're tying it with things that are not of that movement, like the all seeing eye uh, symbolism and all this different things. And I'm like, this is weird. Like uh, I told my son, the evil eye, not the all seeing eye, the evil eye that goes along with that, you know? And I just, I told my son, like, that makes me really uncomfortable. You know, I don't want certain things in my house either. And, you know, they think I'm lame or whatever. It's but... a fashion statement to them, isn't it? Because they <laughs> yeah, don't I'm just like, mm, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, you don't understand what it means. I'm like, you don't understand what it means. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, they're like, you know, that, that, that used to be a thing to help avert curses. I'm like, you better dig deeper. That's just what Gene Simmons said about his Italian grandma. It goes further yes. than that. Yes, it you does. know. Yeah. yeah. Exactly and, the uh, misuse of the swastika. All symbols are neutral. It's like the Jedi, the force in the Jedi films. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100%. You can use it as a Jedi, this force, because it's neutral, or you can use it as a sea flawed. So it's how you use it is what. Yes. Because I had people saying to me, oh, you've got all these various magical symbols all around you. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm energizing them hopefully with either Christ energy or good good energy. I'm not sitting there cursing people or using them as hexes. Um, I'm trying to. I had a, a Baphomet statue, you know, Baphomet from Eliphas Levi. Mm -hmm. And I've had people say to me, "Oh, what you a devil worshiper?" And I'm like, "No, I I study theology, so I like I have statues of all religions and faiths in my room, but you know that one always draws a, a people's <laughs> eye, and um." To me, Eliphas Levi was talking about the male and the female coming together. There's still symbols on it that I still find difficult to understand. I still don't quite understand why it's a goat's head. But, you know, it's got the breast, it's got the phallic symbol. You know, it is. Mm. And it's doing the up and the down about us connecting back to the divine. And I just find them interesting uh, symbols to look upon. But I don't ever use Baphomet. I've never tried to contact Baphomet. And I don't right, right. Do. But There's I, a line. Yeah. You know, I, I find these things interesting. I find what Eliphas Levi said about the goat. Of, he calls it the goat of Mendes, doesn't he? Interesting. And that it's part of a the moon and sun sy symbol come together. You know, and then the discussion of in ancient times, we were um, oh, hermaphrodites. We were men and women together, weren't we? And that we've been split. And that's why we all feel a bit lost because we're looking for our for our other half which again could be why there's a lot of misunderstanding with people and their genders because they're really looking for their their lost other half and mm -hmm. i don't know if that's something we're going back to in future you know evolution is you i personally think humanity is trying to rise up to become angels you know part of that hierarchy we're talking about but i've <laughs> i've heard other people talk about how uh, humanity is going to come back and become a man and a woman in one body again. I find that a bit hard to comprehend, but I can also yeah. see the implications of it, of, of how that would work. Well, and angels in the Bible are described as asexual, that they can choose, right? They can appear as either or, and they can use that to their advantage, whether they be good or bad. And all of this stuff, like, this seems really heretical for me to be talking to people about, but I'm telling you, like, if you look at the Bible too, if you put them side by side and run this through, you might be surprised where you end up. It mm -hmm. is religion that corrupts the things that, that because they can't corrupt it all. They can't take it all apart, right? They have to just corrupt it because if they take it all apart, then it's no fun for them anymore because yeah. the power's in it, right? That's yeah. not, I just think that people don't fully comprehend that you have to know both sides of the coin or you'll never understand what it's for and then some people are perfectly happy with that you know um well i do worry about the light and love movement that you know light and love's the only way i i feel like they're a bit unbalanced they do need to look at the dark side the dark shadows it would be lovely if we could just all do love and light all the time but sadly the world's not like that it's definitely a duality going on of dark and light well there wouldn't be day and night 
there wouldn't be all these things that are set without human beings interference. We have duality. It is real, right? There's up and down, there's day and night, there's, you know, light and dark, like as far as in a room, there's all these things um, above and below. And we have to understand that without pain, you wouldn't know pleasure. Without cold, you wouldn't know hot. You know, there's certain things and all of it, it, it always shows you that in the seasons and death and rebirth and all the things that, that compile in to this whole thing. But they don't want to take the fullness. They just want to take, it's like they take the puzzle pieces and then they put other puzzle pieces in there. And then you don't know what to do because you can never solve the puzzle, you know, and it's frustrating for sure. Um, do I, between the two, don't they? Either you're, you know, you're in the black moment or you're in the white moment or you're in the good yes. moment or in the bad moment. But from the paths I've been working along with, uh, Gurdjieff and uh, Maurice Nicole, who was one of Gurdjieff's people, he talked. They talk about how with them that swing, we're supposed to be being in the middle, like the the stillness of that pendulum. But most mm -hmm. people are affected of going left, right, left, right, and it's very hard to become balanced in the middle. Gurdjieff's work is all about becoming a balanced man or woman, but um, you know, of, of not being affected in one way or another. Or, do you know of Austin Osmond Spare, the magician in in England that Alistair Crowley used to know? No, I don't know about him. Oh, right. He's a wonderful artist, but I also think he was the greatest magician England ever had. But he, he was around at the same time as Crowley. They knew each other. He, he did join Philema for a while, and then for all this, the rituals were a bit silly, and he didn't really get into dressing <laughs> up and things like that, which I think is how I'd probably come at it, to be honest. I've been with a few magical groups, and I'm like... I just can't be bothered to get dressed up and act out a role. <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. Yeah. Play role or role play, however much you like, but it's just not for me. But uh, Austin Osman Spare said it's the neither or the neither. Or Austin Os uh, Rudolf Steiner would say it's the what's between antipathy and sympathy. And in between would be the empathy, which is what we should be working at in the middle. And Spare with the neither or the neither. You want to be in the middle of the two, of the neither and the nivers. It's very hard to be balanced in this world. We get knocked about a lot in different ways. Our thoughts come at us, you know, from all directions. We're not in control of our thoughts, sadly. Our emotions are easily stirred. But that's why working on esoteric paths, whether it is something like the Golden Dawn or you go through or like what I've done with the Gurdjieff path, is learning how to become more balanced and more centered so that you can navigate your way through life really right because it, it's it's always black and white in presentation for any one that's trying to control and mm. even when you're white sometimes you get to the end and it's dark and that's what happened very much for me with mormonism mm. because i i thought what exactly is happening here you know i mean and if you're a thinker and not just a doer which i was mm. a doer for a long time i just wanted to be like my family you know I know the consequences of being in. different. Yeah. Well, we do yeah. think that we can just fit in, which is not yeah. right. Mm. Yeah. Well, you do have that that um, emotional uh, part of it, and you want to do that because you want to make other people happy. But when you stop doing that, not that you don't want to upset them either, but when mm -hmm. you just do you, right, and you're trying to figure things out, you start to see things in a different light. And I'm, I, like you, thought, why are we – doing this dead people stuff and what is happening here like what exactly is this for this doesn't make a whole lot of sense you know um and the more you learn the more dark it gets and and it isn't light like they say it is right like you get to the tip top and then of course just like anything you get to the tip top of and in most societies it's a lie and then you learn you know oh okay well this isn't really what i was presented that we were doing and then you just yeah. feel confusion and a lot of people choose, especially where I live, to just continue with that because they don't want to be outcast. You know, it's not easy to go through life that way, really. You know, but it is what it is, you know. I but don't did judge you, them. Oh no, that's because judgment's not a great... We, we shouldn't be judging. We need to just understand why they were like that or why they act like that. But did you find... Um, 
because you were probably also drawn to the fact, you know, there's this great big angel Moroni starting all yes. this. Because well, I would have yes, loved to be connected with that. But then you, when you start looking into it, and it's all a bit like, well, was he an angel? Was he a demonic? Or, you know, as some I think he was a fallen angel, angel in yeah. my opinion. Mm. Yeah, it's just too similar to John Dee's work. And that was, you know, where where there um, is some pieces that are so hidden. They hide all the parts that make it look dark, right? He had talismans. He had sigils. He had magical things. Like he had, I mean, and he had, he was, he had a scrying stone. Mm -hmm. And that is what helped him write this. And again, he puts it onto Egyptian. He said it was Egyptian hieroglyphics, but it's not. It's the Enochian alphabet. And as soon as I seen that, I thought, nope, this is way too familiar to me. Mm-mm. This and is... I also find they give them technology, don't they? Because I remember when I was at Salt Lake City, I was trying to understand yes. in the Salt Lake City Museum all these communication devices, like a round ball. Like yes, a the Liahona. The Liahona. Yes. Yeah. It's like, and it's this? true. Yeah. And look at look at the other people that have received technology from things like this. It's Hitler. You yeah. know, certain things like that. They were heads and tails above others in technology because they the whole reason why I believe we do work for the dead as Mormons is because I truly in my heart believe one of their top little G gods that they don't know. I think certain people know, but not, not the masses of course is the Braxis because he's a necromancer. And I believe that they do this work for the dead. And this power goes back to the prophet, seer and revelator. This is what his title is prophet, seer and revelator. Because if you do necromancy, you're always doing it in exchange for wisdom and or knowledge of future events. It's it's like it's it's written out. And so Abraxas for me fit really in there. It was very strange to me that I was like, this seems to be what's going on. But there's also a divine feminine, which they lie about. You know, when you get to the top of the top, they have something called the second anointing. And the second anointing is something that you can only, only the select few, and it is very few, can get this. And you have to be recommend, recommended to get it by one of the 12 apostles. And so that's like the top of the church. And one guy came out and spoke about it. He got out completely and he spoke about his uh, anointing. And you get your feet washed by the apostle. And they give you a blessing by laying on of hands, of course. And then... When you go home, because your wife is with you and gets these blessings as well, the, the way this blessing is sealed is the last person to lay a blessing upon your head with the second anointing, which is the highest uh, blessing you can receive in the church, is your wife gives you a blessing. That is not done. You cannot hold the priesthood as a woman until this time be, when she becomes a, uh, a goddess or a prophetess, she, this is the wording, goddess and gods of their own universe. And she seals that blessing upon his head and they push childbirth so much and things. I think that they knew the divine feminine is in there. I'm, it is It is abundantly clear to me at this point, but you know, do you it's think it not a goddess or do you think they're trying to... Um still suppress the goddess side of things then because if I, only I think them, I think they suppress it for the masses and only the elect few know about this whole goddess thing because that is what they call them because you know back in the day then we would get our own planet and all this stuff and it's interesting the things that Joseph Smith would talk about like going to the moon and seeing 10 foot Quakers on the moon and all this weird stuff but and it sounds ridiculous until you read some other things and you go, okay, maybe that story, you know, I've heard this before, but it's not, not the way he presented it. Right. There, there are different Sumerian stories about going to the moon and these different things. And I'm like, maybe this is what he was talking about. You know, I don't know, but I find it interesting. We've got the Sumerian tablets and the golden plates, the emerald tablets and the golden plates. And I'm like, there's just too much similarity here. This is a perversion of things. You know, this is a perversion of that in some way. But I, I definitely think they use that feminine energy at the top elite level. And and it's strange to me, you know, that it's hidden. 
it's all squandered for the men. Well, it kind of <laughs> my own feeling. Well, my own theory is I think the divine goddess has been perhaps kidnapped. The goddess has been, or you know, held in hostage in some way that she's not free. I've noticed in the last maybe 10, 15 years, there seems to be a revival of the goddess. Um, different uh, paths in various places, especially in Glastonbury. The goddess is, is, there's so many people teaching goddess work paths now. So I'm wondering where this, wherever the divine goddess is, and if she is imprisoned in some way, she's managing to reach out to people. But then it sounds like, for the Mormons, that they're part of this where she's kidnapped or kept, or mm -hmm. you know, I don't understand so, why we're not so bringing weird. her out more in, in big religions such as that. You know, she's not very big in the Catholicism. Okay, now they've identified or admitted that Mary Magdalene is the first apostle, but they did it very quietly when Francis, mm -hmm. Francis announced it. It's like they don't want to release the feminine side of of religion it's very peculiar i think that it's mostly because everything has been held in patriarchy and they want to look like the masters of the universe you know this is male energy stuff here but also if you've ever watched a mormon conference or talked to a mormon bishop or spoken to someone that is mormon for a long time and they hold a higher authority they are feminized they are unassuming males they are they they speak in a sing-song way. If you listen to the prophets speak, they speak in a sing-song way. And they speak um, very, I'm an unassuming male. I would never hurt you type thing, you know. And it, it always creeped me out because I always knew it wasn't normal. Like, quote, unquote. Like, you know, I'm like, this isn't right because my dad was very masculine. And the, abusive though he was, it was my stepdad. It did teach me like, that's not quite right. You know, that's not really how a man normally really behaves. Neither is how he behaved, but like, this isn't the normal way, you know? Um, so I wonder if they're channeling that a little oh bit. God. It makes yeah. you wonder. I know yeah. It makes you high, rocky, high ranking um, Mormons. I only met the, you know, the people they put out there to try and talk you into, right. Mormons, you know, and they all, right. They to get you swindled yeah. in there. Yeah. So, I mean, I haven't had the second anointing, but I have had the full temple rites and it's very Masonic in nature. And, you know, you have to do all of these Masonic things. But then when you get married, here's another interesting part. When you get married, you're in your your magical regalia kind of thing. Like you're in your little apron and it's the Adam and Eve apron and you're in all white and you have to cover your face and all this weird stuff. It's not your wedding dress. It's not the dress that you would come out in like, Oh, we did it. You know, they changed before, but um, there's, you know, a one breasted uh, robe sounds very familiar. If I do say so myself. Wow. Um, yes. Very interesting. I have some, shows about this and breakdowns with photos so that people can see that I'm not full of it. Um, but it, it's very interesting. And I think it's very strange that when you get married, they tell you it's for time and all eternity. And then they have you look in two mirrors facing each other, which this is, this is witchcraft. I'm sorry. This is full on. Like, you know, what this is creating a tunnel forever and you're looking into it. And it always made me wonder, are, what are you bringing into you while you're doing this? Now that I know, I didn't know when I did it, obviously. Yeah. I just thought we were looking at each other forever. Oh, how romantic. But we took other names and, you know, we became these other things, right? You're like taking other names and then you're getting married and kneeling at an altar in front of double facing mirrors. I don't know. Sounds fishy to me now that I know well, a lot. Mirror magic is, you know, I know most people just do a bit of mirror magic to see the husband I'm going to marry or something like that. But I know people that have called up gods in mirror magic. You can, mm -hmm. mirror magic. What's, it's I very know, strong. Black mirror, yeah. But mirrors keep what's being put into them. Mm -hmm. So having that, um, like you say, the two, so there's, it's the, um, that creates the, I forgot what they call it. It's not a crescendo. It's like an optical illusion. Yeah, uh -huh. so going on yeah. and on and on and on and on. So like you say, yes. it's kind of like witchcraft. They've made that marriage, trapped in all those mirrors for forever. It's never ending, yep. isn't it? Yeah. 
That's oh. what they tell you too. They tell you that this is for time and all eternity. And you swear that on an altar and you're kneeling in front of this. And the more, you know, the better it is. Like, of course I got rebaptized um, actually to no church in a reservoir just by a guy that said, I just said, just baptize me in Jesus name. I don't want anything attached to this crap. Just tell. And do you know, there was an earthquake that day and I'm not saying I'm so special, but I'm just telling you when I found this stuff out the night before there was a lightning storm here and it was insane. We don't get them like that out in Utah. Like they do back East, you know, in, in like Iowa or somewhere, they have these fascinating lightning storms and lightning hit like and destroyed a bunch of things right before and then there was an earthquake at this um up at the dam where i got baptized and i just thought how funny is that like you may think you're so insignificant but maybe there is a power struggle for you you never know you know yeah. and i do feel like it broke the oaths because you should take no oaths really this is important people the bible I says take does. no oaths for Don't a reason find yourself up to anyone <laughs> Yes. Don't do it. You know, you, you are your own self and you don't owe yourself to anyone like that. Not like that. Not under an oath, you know, like that's scary kind of, um, but I think marriage is oathy. different. I've got you captured then. This is why names are really important. If they can capture your name and capture you and you know, you don't know what they're doing to your soul because that's what they're after the soul. Yes, and, you know, yeah. it's one of the things I, I I say to people all the time: stay awake, don't be controlled, and save your soul. <laughs> yes, yep. And marriage is a gift. It's it, people will say, "Well, you're married, uh, you took an oath there." Not necessarily. All we did was promise to each other. We didn't do an oath. You know, it's be, you got to be careful with your words because spelling is called spelling for real. Like I don't know why people have such a hard time understanding like. Spelling. Think oh, of the word. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like if if words didn't mean anything, then why are they so important? Then, like that, it's it's strange to me that that's a hard hard sell to people. But I I definitely say guard yourself. You know, I I put the power and armor of God upon me every day. It does not mean I don't get infiltrated. And there is a lot. Uh, once you become part of this army, there's there's things that happen sometimes and you just they, they put tests and tricks in your way but just to say yes. to your to your viewers even if in the past you've done things like that or had got caught up in oaths or some it can be broken and i'm yes. going to say on the highly religious if the power of christ will break that and it's like what yes. you did you went and got baptized or even just you know find an exorcist to help you but you can also do yep. it yourself you just you announce to the world you go up well, you don't have to do it you know out on the high street renounce it yeah renounce yeah. it get rid of it exactly. you know who i love for that Derek prince though he was very legalistic i don't know if you know who Derek prince was he was british actually he's fantastic he was uh i think he was a protestant but anyways he's passed away now but he he does actual sermons on the demonic and and about this kind of self-deliverance and different things and i love him for this and it helps you know, it doesn't matter if he was legalistic or if you believe in whatever. It, it helps. Like, just listen to the, the sermon. You know, that's what I tell people. Well, don't don't get Listen to them kind up. of sermons that are uplifting, helping you to be free, rather than these yes. ones that are telling you are, you're a sinner. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need yeah, them. Yeah, sinner, scumbag. Yep, that's yeah. going to keep you down. And you will pro probably are a sinner. I have news for people. None of us are getting out of this alive. And none of us have not done something bad, right? Like, what? just just i i my mom hates that i get on here and i just tell people what whatever and i don't care you know like if it was bad something bad i did or some painful thing or whatever and she gets really like worried about me but i say no it's actually really freeing i don't care and it helps people what if that helps one person exactly. that i told That's how i feel yeah. even if i get through to one person i feel like i've done my job you know, yes, I just, obviously yes. I also get trolls, I and mean, I'm sure you do. I sometimes oh, yeah. get emails that are a bit like, what are you trying to get at? But I know yeah. find when people soon back down. Once I do reply to everything, even the trolls, because, yeah. you know, the way of talking around them and trying to make them see. Though it is quite funny now in this day and age of the last couple of years of working out who are human trolls 
and who are AI bots? That's been my favorite <laughs> lately. <laughs> you can see which are which pretty fast, and it's kind of funny. But I mean, here we are in this age where I'm sure I didn't realize we'd ever be this far down into technology. I'm sure you didn't, you know. But it's strange that these other people like Crowley did. He kind of knew, and and he said it in a like a mystical type of way he didn't just say it but but here he knew some things right and so that makes you have to say like obviously this technology just like john d just like the nazis just like the jack mormon parsons, you know jack parsons uh, who started the rocket program if they yes if parsons the dark sure. side, they like to give us technology and who would like to have the next big thing you know yep yep absolutely oh. and they get through because of what you know, pride, who doesn't want to be the next uh, big deal or whatever. And not that I don't hope that this spreads virally. I do. But like, if it doesn't, I won't not do it. Yeah. You know what it, I mean? Yeah. It's I've still going to help. The man that invented the internet said, and he was a British guy, but he wanted it to be free for everyone to use, didn't he? You know, you know now I'm hearing stories, actually, even before he said it out for all of us, it was being invented you know, like 30, 40 years before, back in the 1940s and the 1950s, they had the beginning. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh, I believe it. Yeah. I who knows it. what to believe these days? But we're very lucky to have the internet, even though it is www, which is 666 in Hebrew. Yes. And it can be used. And like you say, the biggest thing used on it is pornography. So it is being used for dark things. Mm -hmm. But if you can have it, truth seekers like ourselves would not be able to stay in touch or pass on. Mm -hmm. And now I know there's lots of people out there that are trying to find the truth. There's a lot of misinformation. There's also a lot of people, I'm not sure if they're, uh, oh, I forgot what they call it, when they, they're, they're really working for the other side, but they're pretending to be. Oh, one yes. No, I get that. Yes. <laughs> there you are know. plenty of those. Uh, so I tell my husband that a lot. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. And if they make it really, really big, you always have to step back. I'm sorry. I don't trust anybody with a million dollars. I don't. Unless it came from your great, great grandma and you had nothing to do with it. But even then, I'm still giving you the eyebrow, right? Like, because um, these the people. Love of money, the root of all evil. <laughs> yes. And not that we don't all need it. We all need money. But God will give you what you need, not what you want. And that is imperative, not to say there are not some rich people that don't help people. There is, okay? I'm not saying if you have wealth that you're inherently bad. I'm just saying, like, be careful. Be yeah, careful. There's some people out there. Yeah. They, but they're not the ones that are going to be blowing their horns or trumpets and saying, hi, mm -hmm. look what I've just done, you know? No, definitely not. And, you know, they're going to smash any little guy, like you said, like maybe this other guy invented it, but they're going to smash whoever, take the technology and give it to someone who deserves that, right? Like a Bezos, like uh, the Facebook guy, like all these people, you know, if you look at their histories and their families, it's very interesting. Mm. Very interesting. Same thing with musicians. Why do certain musicians magically make it? Well, the doors guy the main guy for him his dad was an admiral chief up high high started world war ii you know i i, I don't know it's it's interesting it's it's always like it's not what you have it's not what you what you are it's who you know when you get in certain circles and it is your bloodline and sometimes you can't control your bloodline doesn't mean you can't break free like me I broke free from something, you know, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't looked very well upon and I am shunned often, but I don't care anymore. No, I'm you're being your true you. And that's more important than being fitting in. And I, I try and encourage that with people. Be who you are supposed to be. Be the star you are supposed to be. Not as in a pop star. or, or maybe uh, The shining. Star. Yes. But yeah. Be the, you know, we're, we're as, Crowley said, we're all stars, each and every one mm -hmm. of us. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's true. And that can be used for good or bad. Like, I mean, stars can help you lead the way, but also can lead you astray, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, the study of these things on, uh, you know, the Golden Dawn opened up so many pathways. I think it's so, in like, it, it is a kind of a short story because it burned out really fast after all this. Like, 
I mean, kind of lives through Crowley, but he changed it into the OTO and mm -hmm. all these different things. But and other facets have been broken off. But but also like you have to look at how much it helped change things too. like it didn't die. It just changed. Right. Same thing with you. You don't have to die. You can change. Yes. You can change. Yeah. Transformation. So, That's the whole uh, chemical path. <laughs> yes. Yes. And use it for the good. You know, be the good. Help, help your, you know what? This is my main thing I tell people. Smile at the lady at the grocery store. Open the door. Uh, say hello. Don't be afraid. They don't want you to make a friend or or be nice or or give some of your light. Like that doesn't mean you have to be their best friend. You you can give a little piece of your light to somebody. Like yesterday I went out to eat and it was really slow. And I said, hey, thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know, not everybody vibrates the same. And I thought that was a really weird thing for him to say to me. But he felt it. You know, he said, a lot of people are mad at me. And you said, thank you. Be, be understanding. You know, that's, yeah. it's, it's well, important. Well, that look, you know, the ones that are not understanding, they're still living for themselves. But that, well, what you were saying, <clears throat> you were saying about smiling at that lady in the store. She might go home thinking, why was that woman smiling at me? Might be on her mind all day. But at some point, that might come down into her of, um, you know, it made me feel good. Someone yeah. smiled at me. Even for a moment, even for a moment. And we're really meant to do that. We're, we're not meant to. The, I love the story in the Bible about when Jesus gave the money to each person. And he, then he came back and said, what did you do with it? This parable, you know, and one guy buried it and he did nothing. And Jesus said, get out of my sight for I never knew you. That tells you something like that is so I mean, that's wild. You know, it's not the money that's evil. It's what you're doing. What you're doing right? with it. Yeah. Do something good, whether you have it or don't have it. You know, be the person that makes the change. And you can learn these things and, and understand them and not be a part of it. Right? Like you can understand the symbolism and not say, yeah, I'm going to go join that faction tomorrow. Sounds like a good idea. You know, just know the programming, know the story, put it in your back pocket. Father, your husband. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I have had in a minute, Heidi. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're, you're good. good. I have had a wonderful yeah. time, and I hope you'll come back. I would love to do one Absolutely. on Steiner. That sounds like that would be amazing. I think we'd have a great. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> awesome. Will you let everybody know one more time where they can find you? Well, most people find me through my website, which is www.debbie-elliot.co.uk, with two L's, two T's, and Elliot. Or YouTube DJ Elliot one four two eight five. Awesome! This is one four two eight five seven. Sorry, I'm not thinking then. <laughs> You're good. And I have had a wonderful time with you. I cannot wait for number two. It's wonderful to share your light. You obviously shine brightly yourself. So oh, I know you do. Have, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.